What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video in Brett's Garage. I'm Brett and in today's video I'm going to do a review on my daily driven 2018 Volkswagen Golf R. I'm going to talk about some of the things that I like about my car, some of the things that I don't like about my car, and I'm also going to show you the dyno runs that I have done on my Golf R. I'm also going to talk about the fuel efficiency of my Golf R. I'm also going to talk about the type of fuel that I've been using in my Golf R. And I'm also going to show you my fuel log that I've been keeping. Before we get started, please hit that like button. Not only does it help my channel grow, it helps my video to reach more people and it helps motivate me to make more videos for you. So please hit that like button and let's get started. I originally ordered this car in August 2017. It was a factory pre-order and I was told that it would be four months for it to show up. It actually took seven months for it to show up and I got the car February 24th, 2018. Since then, I have put 25,000 kilometers on the car. When I first picked up the car, it only had 12.4 kilometers on the odometer. I custom ordered this car from the factory with Pretoria wheels, adaptive cruise control, lane assist, and a six speed manual transmission. When I first ordered the car, it was August 2017, and I had the option to take home a 2017 Golf R that day. However, I chose to wait the four months and custom order a 2018 Golf R. The Golf R was sold to arrive November 2017. In November, the dealership called me and told me that I won't be here until December. December turned into January, January turned into February, and in February, the dealership called me and told me, unfortunately, the car will not be arriving until May 2018. It was at this point I told the dealership to cancel my order, give me my money back, and I went down to Vancouver, BC and, and found the exact same Golf R, the only difference being the Spielberg wheels. I don't like the Spielberg wheels because if you look at the driver's side, it looks like the spokes are digging into the road, whereas if you look at the passenger side of the car, it looks like the spokes are actually flexing away from the road. I don't know why Volkswagen couldn't have just made them directional so that they look the same on both sides of the car. This really annoys me, but I got my car in February as opposed to May of 2018. talk about some of the things that I do not like about this car. Not in any order, but one of the things I don't like about this car, when you click on the main display and you click on car, then you click on selection, and then you click on performance monitor, sometimes it'll actually go into the lap timer as opposed to the performance monitor. I don't know why it does this, but it seems to do it every time you turn the car on, after the car has been off for a certain amount of time. Another thing I dislike about this car is the oil temperature gauge does not read if the temperature of the oil is below 50 degrees Celsius. I don't know why it doesn't do this, but I find it annoying. And the reason I find it annoying is because sometimes this gauge doesn't work at all and it'll just read nothing and you'll think that your oil is actually too cold. There's been a few times where I've been driving around and the oil was warmer than 50 degrees Celsius. However, the gauge was displaying nothing and I assumed the oil was still cold. So right now my water temperature gauge is not functioning, but the oil temperature is, but the water temperature under the tachometer is actually working fine. So this doesn't happen very often, but uh, when it does, you just have to go to a different page and come back and it'll be fine. Uh, as you can see right now, this is the oil temperature on the performance monitor 
and it is currently reading nothing. Um, it'll it'll read that until the oil reaches at least 50 degrees Celsius. However, um, as you can see, currently my oil temperature is 99 degrees Celsius, and it is still displaying nothing. So even if you reset it, and go through. it still says nothing. Um, so I think at this point you'd have to go back into a different menu and go back into your car settings and there you go. Now the gauge is working again. Another thing I dislike about the car is if it's raining and you go to crack the window and you go turn the corner, the rain water that's on the roof will just come straight into the car and it'll get on your lap, it'll get all over your door uh, it'll just the water will just get everywhere uh, maybe because the car is so aerodynamic that the water just falls in the car when the windows open another thing I don't like about this car is sometimes in the center infotainment system uh, when the car displays the number four it'll actually have a couple pixels that are not supposed to be illuminated uh, but it'll turn on a few extra pixels on the top of the four a bit of a glitch it only seems to do it on the oil temperature gauge and it only seems to do it with the number four one of the problems i've been experiencing with the lcd display is that occasionally there's pixels that illuminate that uh, shouldn't be illuminated um, i've never had it oh there we go right there top of the four i don't know why it does that but it's usually on the number four. As you can see on my performance monitor, I am monitoring my oil temperature. And I don't know if you could see that, but look at the top of the one. Occasionally it does this with other numbers as well. It's a little bit annoying. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Another thing I don't like, this is everybody's favorite, is the volume knob. So when you go to adjust the volume, the actual power button for the stereo will rotate with the volume. And this drives me absolutely nuts. The power button should be upright at all times, and you should be able to adjust the volume without turning the power button. Um, because of this, I only use the volume controls on the steering wheel, and I avoid using the volume knob on the entertainment system. Another thing I don't like about this car is on the six-speed manual transmission, there is a spring on the clutch pedal, and this spring kills all the feedback that you would normally feel in a standard transmission car. It's supposed to make things feel smoother. Uh, in my opinion, it just makes the car feel artificial. You can see that big spring there. As you depress the clutch, it helps assist. Another thing I don't like about this car, and it's kind of ironic because I paid extra for this feature, is the adaptive cruise control and the lane assist. I don't like any of these features, and the reason I don't like these features is because I find that the lane assist is actually activated by shadows on the road, or if there's cracks in the road that have been repaired with that black tar, sometimes the car will follow those lines, or if there's a lack of paint lines, the car will just follow whatever lines it wants. Um, also, I've noticed that sometimes the car tends to follow the vehicle in front of you. Uh, maybe if the vehicle in front of you exits the highway, uh, this car will tend to sort of follow them for the brief second and then it kind of gets confused, doesn't know what to do, and you have to basically take over and tell the car where to go. There's times where you'll be driving along and then all of a sudden you can feel the car tugging. As for the adaptive cruise control, I don't like this feature. Um, it's actually kind of cool. One of the things I don't like about it though is the follow distance. Um, you can't quite set it close enough and I find that it's a little bit overreactive uh, if someone cuts you off or if you're uh, coming up on someone faster than they're traveling it'll it'll hit the brakes too hard, it'll back off too quickly and it's just not, it's not fine-tuned enough for, for my liking. Another thing I don't like about this car is the USB port that's provided for you in the center. I've got uh, big hands and my big hands can't grab the USB cord and 
I just can't get in there with my hands and it's very difficult to plug in a USB cord. Another thing is the weather stripping on the front driver's side door. When I first got this car, the weather stripping was actually rubbing and it actually rubbed the paint clean off the car. So it's gonna be very difficult to see with the car being so dirty, but you can almost tell that on the leading edge of the door from here to here, there's actually no paint on that part of the door. And the reason is, is because when you open the door, the car is actually rubbing on the weather stripping. It's very difficult to see. Maybe if I zoom right in. So you can see the inside of the door. The weather stripping right there is actually clean. The dirt's been rubbed off of it. And that's because when the door closes and opens, it actually rubs on the weather stripping. So I've already had this fixed once from Volkswagen and uh, I never got it repainted just because it is still happening and I really don't want to have my entire door repainted if they're not going to pay to have the car ceramic coated again. And Volkswagen is not willing to pay for the ceramic coating. Another thing I don't like about the paint of this vehicle is when I first got the car the paint was extremely soft any tiny little rock or any little bit of debris from the vehicle in front of you would chip the paint right down to the bare metal. I found after owning the car for a few months the paint seemed to harden up a little bit and it's not an issue as much anymore. However, during the first month of ownership I found the paint to be extremely soft. Another thing I don't like about this car is the Think Blue Trainer. I've tried using it many times. I've tried driving extremely efficiently and it doesn't seem to quite matter. Uh, the Think Blue trainer will penalize you at any opportunity it can. Stay in one gear for too long. If you don't shift quick enough, if you go over 80 kilometers an hour, uh, any little thing will drastically reduce your Think Blue number. Any higher than 85% is actually quite difficult to achieve. I don't really like this Think Blue trainer. Um, this is a Golf R, it's a high performance vehicle why anybody would want to try and drive it as fuel efficiently as possible i don't know but i just think the think blue trainer is way too critical and it takes away points way too critically i just used the think blue blue trainer and drove to work and got an average of 6.7 liters per 100 kilometers drove 29 kilometers Another thing I think this car is lacking is an exhaust gas temperature gauge. They've gone to the extent to put in a boost gauge, uh, they put in an oil temperature gauge. Why does it not have an exhaust gas temperature gauge? Another thing I don't like about this car is the fact that the rear passenger door had a leak. Every time it would rain, it would leak rainwater into the car. And I think this is completely unacceptable. My parents used to drive a 1982 Volkswagen Jetta and 30 years ago this car had the exact same problem. Every time it would rain the weather seals would leak and rain would get inside the car. My 2018 Volkswagen Golf R is having the exact same problem except I've got it fixed now. Another thing about this car that I don't like is the Apple CarPlay. I don't find it works very well. I'm not sure if it's my iPhone that causing the issues or if it's the car itself that is having the problems. One or the other, it doesn't work very well and I'm not a fan. Well, I don't want to make this a hate video. That was definitely a lot of dislikes about this car. Don't get me wrong, I love this car. This is my ultimate daily driver. This is my favorite car I've ever driven. One of the things I love about this car is the fact that it's all wheel drive. I love how fuel efficient it is. I love the fact that it comes with a boost gauge. I love the fact that it comes with an oil temperature gauge. I absolutely love this car. I love how it has no turbo lag or very little turbo lag. I like the keyless entry. I like the infotainment system. I like the navigation system. The visual cockpit, I think it's amazing, it looks great.
I love how the car has a lap timer. I think that's phenomenal. I also like how you can change the units between kilometers, US miles, UK miles, whatever you feel like driving in. You can change the units and drive in that. I also like the sound system that this car comes with. It came with a 400 watt Fender audio system and it has a 10 inch subwoofer in the trunk. speed manual transmission every gear progressively has more boost than the next one and it just makes the car feel amazing every gear just pulls hard and it just I just love this car I also like how this car has dynamic chassis control I have five different drivability modes I can select from I have eco mode comfort mode normal mode race mode and custom mode but let's be honest when have I ever driven this car in any other mode other than race mode and I'm not sure if I knew this before, but I just found it the other day. Maybe I knew about it, I can't remember, but this car actually has a CD player, which is funny. I didn't think they still made cards with CD players. It also has two SD card slots. Uh, one of those card slots has the Volkswagen navigation maps loaded onto it, and the second SD card is open. Uh, you can load your own music in there. This is my car book. Inside this book, I have fuel records of all the fuel I've ever added to the car. I have my maintenance records, I have my oil changes, modifications, I have pictures. Anything that's ever happened to the car is inside this book. And this is the dynograph that I had done down at Paradigm Auto in Victoria, BC. I made a max horsepower of 232.6 at 5800 RPM, the max torque of 236.3 at 2900 RPM. So I know you're thinking how come the Golf R makes 292 horsepower but this dyno is at 232 and that's because there is a loss of power when it goes through the transmission and gets split to the wheels. This number of 232 horsepower is actually measured at the wheels. This is wheel horsepower. And the number is actually split equally 50-50 between all four tires. Here is my air to fuel ratio for the dyno pole. As you can see, it's actually running quite lean and it doesn't start to get a richer fuel mixture until uh, pretty much red line. When I first saw this, I was, a little bit, uh, I was a little bit concerned the car was running way too lean. So I actually went and I bought a P3 gauge and then since then I've had my P3 gauge installed and the P3 gauge is actually quite similar to uh, this line here. When it comes to putting fuel in my Golf R, I only put premium quality fuel in the car. I always use a 91 octane or higher. In a lot of cases, I've been using Chevron 94. 
And most recently I have switched to Shell 91V Power. Now I know what you're probably thinking, it doesn't matter what type of fuel you put in your car, whether it's 91 from this place, or it's 91 from that place, or 94 from this place. You might think it's all the same, however, if you look at the Dynograph, this Dynograph here was done with Chevron 94 octane. As you can see right in the middle of the graph, there's some uh, strange dips in power happening in both the torque line and in the horsepower line. What I've done is ever since the dyno test, I've started using Shell 91V power. I've put a few tanks of fuel through the car and I'm gonna go back to the dyno and do another test just with Shell 91V power to see if there's a difference and maybe get rid of this strange stuff that's happening in the middle here. This is why I think what type of fuel you put in your car matters. You might not be able to feel this, but you can certainly see it on a Dynograph. Which is one of the reasons why I have recorded absolutely every drop of fuel that I've ever added to the Golf R ever since day one. The other reason that I have kept this record is to have a visual reference of the fuel consumption of the engine throughout its lifespan. I could also see changes in the engine from when it was stock to when I go APR stage two or make modifications to the engine, I can see if it makes changes to the fuel consumption. That's it for today's video. Thanks everyone for watching. Please hit that like button. Not only does it help my channel to grow, but it helps my video to reach more people and it helps motivate me to make more videos for you. So please hit that like button and we'll see you in the next video.